Hey, what's up? So you're just in time for another eBay antique unboxing. And I ordered so many things, I am not even sure what the hell this is. So let's see. Now, uh, I don't like the fact that it was thrown in a plastic envelope because most of the stuff I get is fragile -y. And she did use like a cardboard box inside of it. But still, I don't know, man. I mean, the aesthetics is not pleasing. I would have much uh, rather... Uh, you know, liked getting a box. Okay. So maybe I'm a little bit of a biatch, but, um, yeah, I'm always bitching about something, always complaining about something. I am a negative Nelly, I guess. I guess you can say, let's just hope to God that this thing is not broken so far. I think there's bubble wrap inside here, but why would you, why wouldn't you just use a box? I guess you can't figure people out, right? All right, let's get this open. Let's get the show on the road here. And she did use bubble wrap. Okay, that's a good sign. And let's pop. Oh, I love it. I love to pop bubbles. It's like it's so much uh, fun. It's like uh, pleasing, right? Did you ever just sit there and just take bubble wrap and just just pop all the bubbles? My daughter does that every time. Like when I used to sell on Etsy, and I'd go like to get a roll to uh, ship my item out, and all the bubbles would be popped. All right, let's see what we got here. And, okay, wait, is this taped? Yes, it's taped. Another hurdle to overcome here. All right. Never cut towards yourself. Do I listen? No. I used to work at a deli, and the manager used to get a heart attack. Every time I used to use the knife, um, or the knives, he used to say, D never cut towards yourself, and I never listened. And then I ended up, I, I shit you not, cutting a tip of my thumb off. And yeah, I had to go to the ER and I learned that lesson and I still don't follow it. Okay. Oh, and there's more bubble wrap. All right. All right. I give her credit. She used two boxes so far. Um, two sets of uh, bubble wrap. And yeah, this is taped pretty good. We're getting there. We're slowly, slowly making progress. And aha. Okay. This is a beaut. This is an absolute and utter beauty. Look at this. Oh my God, I'm floored. I'm floored by this. Floored. And uh, what do we got here? Okay, so this is an antique Victorian scent bottle. But it's not just your everyday average scent bottle. What's very, very, very unusual about it is this mesh top. And I've never seen one of these scent bottles before with a mesh top. For example, here, I'll show you how they usually are. So here is another Victorian scent bottle. This one's shaped like a horn. And if you look, the top has a hinge top, but it doesn't have any uh, little holes in it like this one. You see what I mean? That is weird. Why did that have holes in it? Like if you put liquid in here, right? It would usually have like a little stopper sometimes. Well, usually like 99% of the times. And uh, yeah, so why would there be like mesh in here? I guess, let's figure it out. Let's use our brains. Let's put our thinking caps on. Okay, so you open this up. Okay, it's missing the original glass stopper. So the glass stopper would have prevented the fluid or the liquid uh, oil, you know, the scented oil from coming out. But why would there be a mesh top? And let's take a look at that mesh top. Uh, my guess is, is that somebody would have put a sponge, like a little, little like piece of cloth or a sponge in the cap, right? And, uh, you know, well, before they did that, would dab the perfume on it, right? Like that. Say this is the sponge, right? And then stick that right into the cap. And then when they didn't feel like putting the perfume on, on their wrist, they would open this up and, I mean, uh, close this and just take a whiff. Take a whiff of the perfume. So instead of applying the perfume every so often, they could just get a whiff of the perfume by just putting it up to their nose. And, uh... I think they call that, and I'm going to get it wrong, a vinaigrette. A vinaigrette. What is a vinaigrette? Did I say vinaigrette? Oh, my God. No, it's not a salad dressing. I think it's pronounced vin -igrette. vinaigrette. And these things are cool. I've never had a vinaigrette. Oh, my God. It really sounds like I'm saying vinaigrette uh, in my collection before. Uh, mostly, it's these solid... Uh, solid capped um, antique Victorian perfume crystal bottles. And uh, 
This one actually is interesting. It could have uh, been one of two things and it could have held smelling salts in there instead of liquid, which I don't know if they could be able to fit smelling salts into this little, well, maybe, yeah, if they were small enough, they could fit that in there. I'll show you what smelling salts look like. So here's a bottle that has the actual smelling salts in it from uh, the late 1800s. And uh, as you can see, they're actually quite big, but they could have made them smaller. And these had like, like some kind of ammonia in it mixed with like a lavender or some kind of scented smell that would actually wake up ladies from uh, when they were fainting. <laughs> so it was like a fainting thing. And uh, to, to this day, I think athletes uh, use smelling salts when they pass out um, because um, I think uh, people that bodybuild or something use it. I don't know. I read it on the internet. I Google everything. And uh, so we could have had these little miniature sized smelling salt pellets placed in here. And uh, maybe that's why you have this uh, little mesh top. Um, this is actually quite beautiful. I don't know the exact age. I am going to guesstimate. And again, I am no expert, but my guess is this was probably from the 1870s to about the 1890s. I thought maybe 1900, but the more I look at it, the older it is, especially with that fancy, fancy, fancy top. That looks very, very old. Now this was part of a chatelaine, or it could have been part of a chatelaine. And uh, what is a chatelaine? So you see this little loop here, right? A chatelaine was something that was suspended from like a, a hook with chains. And uh, so ladies didn't have to carry things around. They would have things dangling. And they would have sometimes these little clips that used to attach to their dresses and have multiple things dangling from it. Instead of uh, carrying around a purse, they didn't have pockets in their dresses. So um, that would make things handy for them when they walked around and traveled and went places. So here's an example of a chatelaine. And this is an antique Victorian notebook that um, was dangled by a pendant or it could be attached to a hook and attached to the dress with a little pencil. And so there was lots of things that you can dangle from chatelaines. You could uh, dangle needle cases, you can dangle little mirrors, you can dangle um, little boot hooks, all sorts of things. And perfume bottles were one of them. Now during the Victorian era, every single thing smelt awful. I mean, the Victorian era was probably very, very stinky. And if you think about it, horses were constantly shitting in the streets. Think about it, they didn't have cars, and the only transportation they basically had was um, the wagon and the horse, and uh, horses just shit all day long. They had people, they hired people to go around um, with shovels, cleaning up horse shit all day long, and the streets weren't really paved, they were mostly dirt, and uh, there was horse shit everywhere. People didn't bathe, if you think about it, I mean, they bathed, but not as much as we do today. Most people did not have, like, um pipes in their house and running water with a heater um, to heat the water. So what did they do? They took baths by uh, filling up a bathtub with water um, that they boiled in kettles. And uh, if they were lucky, <laughs> if not, they took a cold bath. And so everybody had BO, everybody smelled. Women fainted all the time because of the uh, tight laced corsets they wore. They couldn't breathe. They passed out all the time. They got something called the vapors. And uh, so this would have probably uh, either held scented oils in it with a sponge in the in the cap um, so she didn't have to apply the perfume. She could just smell the perfume. And that's possibly what it is. Now, the glass. What kind of glass is this? American? European? I don't know. My guess is it's American early cut, um, American brilliant early cut glass. It could also be French from Baccarat. Baccarat made beautiful, beautiful, exquisite cut glass. This is crystal. This is not molded. It is not pressed. This is another example of crystal that's not molded or pressed glass. You can tell it's crystal because it's so clear and uh, it's really, really, really high quality. You could see it like, look how it glistens like a diamond. Um, pressed glass has a little bit of cloudiness to it. It never looks as pretty as crystal. And uh, now this was probably made in America. There is no markings. Um, usually like if something was European, especially with, uh, William McKinley, President William McKinley, he made a law, I believe in 1896 or 1897, that anything came from another country that came from another country to be sold in the U S had to have a country of origin marked on it. So if something that came from, say this was from France, 
it would have had France written on it or stamped somewhere if it was made from uh, 1897 and after. Um, since I don't see any markings on it, my guess is it's probably American. Um, but if it did come, you know, you know, if it did come after 1897, um, you would probably uh, actually see a mark on it. And but if it was American, you still wouldn't. Um, they didn't have to mark their um, items. Only the foreigners had to mark their items. But again, my guess is this is a uh, pre-1897, probably anywhere between the 1870s to the 1890s is my guess. Um, this is quite beautiful. Now, I won it for $19.99 opening bid. The seller put it in the wrong category, and it was a win-win for me. Um, I love when they don't know what these things are, and you get them for cheap. Uh, retail value of this, well, in a high-end antique shop, like on First Dibs or Ruby Lane or a specialty shop, um, something like this would sell between $150 to $250 on eBay probably between $70 to $125 to $150. Now, um, I stopped selling on eBay because um, too many dealers were looking to uh, get things for like thrift shop prices to flip things uh, for really, 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 uh, you know, expensive prices. And uh, they were all looking for bargains. And I said, the hell with it. Even though I only shop on eBay because I'm looking for the bargains pretty much. I wouldn't bother if I was an eBay dealer listing something like this because on eBay, even if you have like 20 people interested in it, they don't want to pay the value of the item. They all want bargains. They all want discounts. And it became like sort of like a, I don't know, like a unhappy thing to be a seller on eBay because again, everybody is looking to get those cheap prices. So again, if I was to sell this in, um, like an exclusive online shop, I would expect to get a lot more for it. Now, am I selling any of these things? The answer is no. Um, I had an Etsy shop for nine years. I recently quit selling on Etsy because I just love my antiques. I hate selling them. It makes me very sad to pack them up and send them out, even though the money was uh, pretty good because a lot of people that were wealthy would buy from me. I had a couple of actually, um, a couple of uh, uh, like movie stars, buy from me. I'm not going to tell you everybody who bought from me, but I also had a, a famous, very famous people that have millions of follower, uh, followers buy from me and they always pay top dollars for my antiques. But, um, I just like pretty much, um, got turned off by Etsy, all the fees. Now you have to pay 27% capital gains tax to the government. If you make any profit of $600 or more a year electronically online, or if you get any payments from PayPal or credit card processor, they um, they immediately 1099 you. And I don't feel like paying 27% on top of all the fees for selling my things on the internet. So I decided I'm going to keep them all. So I hope you learned something today. You learned um, about these beautiful scent bottles, how uh, during the Victorian times, people pretty smelled, uh, smelled pretty uh, freaking bad. They smelled like absolute, like probably rotting corpses. Um, and so a lady would have to carry something like this around just to get rid of the unpleasant smells that surrounded her. Thanks for watching another one of my videos. So long, and I'll see you guys all soon.